Hi, this is Allie from the Terra team. In this video, I'll introduce the Workspace, your computational sandbox for doing research projects in the cloud in Terra. I'll show how you can use the Workspace as a unified place for your research where you can keep data and analysis tools organized and analyze and visualize your data. I'm going to demo on one of my own workspaces, so I'll start at the Terra homepage where I'll select Workspaces from the main menu at the top left. I'll filter by access level to show only workspaces where I'm an owner. For this video, I'm going to show you my copy of one of our showcase workspaces, one that reproduces a published paper on the genetic causes of a particular coronary defect. I know it has the word reproducibility in it, so I'll search for that. To get into a workspace, click on the name. That will take you to the workspace landing page or dashboard. The dashboard is where you'll keep project documentation, such as an overview of your analysis and a summary of the data and tools you're using. You can edit the documentation, which is written in the Markdown language, by clicking on the pencil icon at the top of the dashboard. On the right side is general information about the workspace, other owners, creation dates, and cost estimates. And moving to the top, you'll see how to access different project components. Let's start with project data, which is the focus of the data tab, located right next to the dashboard tab. When working in the cloud, you need to know where in the cloud your data actually are. In a workspace, you'll keep track of that, what your data is, where it's physically located in the cloud with data tables, which you see in this left column. They're like spreadsheets you might keep on your local computer, but built into the workspace. Here's an example of a table of participants. I can expand the table to see exactly what's in it by clicking on the name. Each row's a separate entity. You can see there are 100 participants in this project and 100 rows in the table. Each column is a different piece of information that goes along with that row. In this case, the table includes synthetic BAMs generated by analysis I already did in the workspace. You can see them here. Your project tables can have as many columns as you need. Columns can include information like links to genomic data files or phenotypic data to analyze. They can also include information that helps you with managing your project, like dates of collection and the study ID. The second column of this data table, which I talked about, shows an example of how to include links to the files in the cloud. Here's a link to some of this participant's data in a public Google bucket. You can see the full path when I hover over the cell. Later in the video, I'll show how your analysis tools can use links in the data table to access data in the cloud for input. If you have files that you'll use again and again in your analysis, like interval files or Docker images, you can keep them below the data tables in the workspace data section. And finally, each workspace has a dedicated Google Cloud storage bucket for generated data and log files. The file directory for the bucket is here, at the bottom of the left column beneath the workspace data section. OK, that's the basics of data in the workspace. How about analysis? Terra includes two types of analysis, interactive analysis with tools like Jupyter Notebooks and bulk analysis with workflows. You can access and organize these in the Notebooks or Workflows tabs, which I'll cover next. Let's start by looking at Interactive Analysis, which is in the Notebooks tab. You may have heard of or already used Jupyter Notebooks, which let you analyze data and visualize results in real time. Notebooks combine documentation, code, and data in a single package you can easily share and reproduce. You can see that my workspace has one notebook for doing a cluster analysis. To run a notebook, you click on the name and select either Edit or Play Mode. Edit Mode lets you save changes to the notebook, while Play Mode lets you run the code but not save any changes. When you open a notebook in a workspace, Terra spins up a virtual machine or cluster of machines to execute the code. The first time you open a notebook, it will take a few minutes while Terra creates a virtual application. When you open a notebook again, like I'm doing, it should only take a few seconds to spin up. If your interactive analysis needs a lot of processing power or special libraries and packages, you can change your notebook's virtual application compute by clicking the gear icon at the top right of your workspace. 
When you do that, you'll see there's a drop-down menu that lets you choose environments with libraries and packages already installed, like a hail environment or a bioconductor environment. There are also three pre-configured levels of compute, moderate, increased, and high. And if the options don't work for you, you can select a custom compute from the drop-down menu. Checking this box allows you to configure a parallel processing Spark cluster, which can be useful for big data sets or large computations. Back to the notebook. Now that it's running, I'll scroll down and highlight documentation and code cells. Notebooks are flexible. You can do any R or Python analysis, and they let you visualize and iterate in real time. If you want to learn more about interactive analysis in Terra, check out our support center. The second mode of analysis in Terra is bulk analysis, which you can access by clicking the Workflows tab at the top of your workspace. Workflows, or pipelines, are a series of computational steps that you submit and let run, then come back to look at results when they're finished. They're typically used for automated tasks like aligning reads or calling variants. You'll collect and configure workflows for your project on this page. Workflows in Terra are written in the Workflow Description Language, or WIDL for short. In many cases, you don't have to write your own WIDLs from scratch. You can access published workflows with the Find a Workflow option on the left of this page. When you click the link, Terra will suggest some curated workflows. Or you can search workflows in DocStore or the Broad Methods repository and upload directly to your workspace. Back to workflows. To copy to another workspace, or duplicate or delete them from this workspace, click here on the three vertical dots at the right of the card. Once you've got a workflow tool you need in your workspace, you can use it by clicking on its card. The workflow card gives a lot of additional information about the WIDL, like what version it is and some details on what it does. You can view the raw code by clicking Script at the bottom, or specify the inputs and outputs by selecting those tabs. For example, here's where you would configure inputs. You can edit data file names and locations, disk sizes, and reference files in the Attributes column. Outputs work the same way. I can click on Use Defaults if I want to do that. I mentioned earlier using the data table for workflow inputs. If the attributes column has the format this dot, like this one, the WIDL knows to go to the data table for the location of the data in the cloud. Outputs work the same way with the same formatting. Once you have the workflow set up the way you want, you can run it from here by following the steps in the form. I'll use the defaults to run using the data table by selecting this radio button. My entity type is participants, which I'll select from the drop down menu. Step two select the data. I'm going to choose specific rows to process by taking the second radio button. I'll check off these two participants from the data table because I want a short job to run. Click OK. Then, to confirm, I'll click Run Analysis. And to be doubly sure, I need to confirm once again. When I click Launch, Tara is going to submit my workflow to run in the cloud and take me to the last workspace page, Job History. The Job History page is where you can monitor and troubleshoot your workflow submissions. You can see here the top level status of the workflow. The one I just launched is submitted, and there are a couple of previous submissions as well. To monitor jobs that are running, you have to refresh the page. For help with troubleshooting failed jobs, you can click on the submission that failed on the left here. I see an error message that an expected input was empty. I can fix that the next time and submit again with the Relaunch Failures button. That wraps up the Intro to Terra Workspaces video. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll enjoy using the platform for your analysis in the cloud.